Hey guys, I'm David Parker, and this is the first episode of the Sleeping Trailer Series, where we're gonna show you how we take an old refrigerated 53-foot trailer and turn it into a sleeping trailer that we use on the portal. In the past, you guys have seen us on deployment with our custom sleeping trailers. We've had a lot of questions about how the systems work, how we did it. Since we're building a new one, the third one, we're gonna take you through the process and we're gonna show you from start to finish how we outfit it, put it together, do the life safety systems, do the water systems, the power, water heating, air conditioning, HVAC, all the systems that we need to take this 53 foot platform and turn it into a custom sleeping trailer that we can utilize on deployment because we found that with the other bunk houses and RVs, we just don't have the commercial reach, the longevity, the quality, the weight carrying, the capacity. And so in this series, we're gonna show you how it's done. When we say refrigerated trailer, so you have refrigerated trailers and you have frozen trailers. The difference is the amount of insulation. One of my sleeping trailers is what we'll call a refrigerated trailer. And it would be for hauling like, I don't know, lettuce or something that's not frozen. Maybe you only wanna keep the inside of the reefer box 35 to 40 degrees. The walls are one inch thick. So you know the trailers are 102 wide. So those have more than eight foot inside of them. Now these trailers that we've been picking up from Walmart, they are frozen trailers and the, the walls may be like two or two and a half inches thick. And the reason I know that is because you don't have a full 96 inches inside. So I have to cut a sheet of plywood down to make it fit across inside. Refrigerated trailers have something like four and four inches, like four inches in the bottom and four inches in the top. And maybe the frozen trailers like these have six inches of insulation. And another thing you could do if you're following along at home, they come with kind of two floor types. There's a flat floor refrigerated trailer, which is what we try to buy. And then they have the return floors and they're slatted so it has these deep grooves that are like an inch wide and maybe an inch deep. And that's so when the pallets are in there and the reefer unit is at the front of the trailer, the air can circulate around the whole load. So we try to find the flat four refrigerated trailers. We try to find the just refrigerated where we have the one inch walls, but we can't usually find those because we're not buying them new. And then another thing you could do is you can buy an insulated van trailer and where you'll see those used a lot, if you ever see a little Debbie truck, that would be a insulated van trailer. You know, you could use any of those platforms and you certainly could just buy a van trailer and close cell phone with yourself. But man, these trailers are such a great thermal envelope the way they're built. And then another thing about a refrigerated trailer, there's no frame under the trailer. All the strength of the trailer is in the sidewall. So the whole sidewall of the trailer is a truss. And then this bottom band, that's where all the longitudinal strength of the trailer comes in. And then the, up through the sidewall where the uh, aluminum sheets are sandwiched on, that's the strength of the trailer making it like a truss. And then because the truss is like that, it uses the top rib or the ceiling to make the strength of the trailer. So every part of the trailer is part of the component strength of it. So when we cut the doors and whatnot in it, and we'll talk about this in later videos, we have to take up for the compensation of where we've cut the door out because as you can see in the front where the king pin hooks up and the landing gear is you can see they have the ribs every one foot and then they back off to two feet and so if we cut a hole through the door we're going to cut through one of those so we have to come back and be intentional that we take that load and that stress that we've taken out of that sidewall and reinforce it in the bottom and we'll talk about that in later videos and then another thing that we look for in the trucks is we try to find air ride trailers because this trailer is going to be four bedroom two bath and then it's going to have about 20 feet in the back that's going to have logistics posts and rails where we can put in like a kitchen for stand or if we were doing an event say a water event we could put in our custom water shelves that have all the different pecs and plumbing fittings and we could have that so we could load that in there if we were going into a hurricane with just a couple of guys we call it light then we could put in different gear and stuff in the back and maybe we didn't take our canopy trailer we could use that in the back as a place to have a breakfast or a meeting you know so it's going to have some flex space in in the back we're going to have four bedrooms up front separated by two baths and so it's going to be pretty cool it's going to be designed for four guys or eight you know you could go too deep in it or you could just do one guy per bedroom this is where it would all begin so if you were an artist this would be like your blank canvas so like we were talking about you'll notice how the floor is flat so it doesn't have those ribs so that makes it easy for us to work when we get in here you can also see that it has this logistics track inside this e-track so we'll take all that out the way they make these trailers is a vacuum mold the closed cell foam behind this outer piece of like fiberglass and then it's bonded all the way through 
and then that way they get rid of the thermal bridging from the inside to the outside. The outside ribs of the trailer that we saw that have the strength in it, they kind of offset to the inside and the closed cell foam kind of holds it all together. That's how they get rid of the thermal bridging so they don't have a piece of metal that's like at minus 30 degrees and outside it's 100 degrees so you know it's sweat or mess up. That's why we really like these trailers because they give us a great solid foundation to start on. This truck and trailer rig could gross 80,000 going down the road. The trailer is actually designed to probably do 100,000 if you look at the load capacity of the truck and the trailer and the axles. We'll take the reefer unit off the front, we'll take it to a buddy of mine next door that will reskin the front of it on the same exact metal that's on the outside and so that'll get rid of the refrigeration unit on the front of the trailer. They start out a little heavier. A typical van trailer is going to be in the probably 10 to 12,000 pound range. This trailer is probably a little bit heavier at 15,000 and then when we get done with the sleeping trailer and we have all the air conditioners and generators and fuel and water and everything on it we're still going to be at a total gross around 55 to 60,000 so we still have 20,000 pounds of capacity which is just a tremendous amount. A lot of those big RV even the fifth wheels only have like two or three thousand pounds of capacity beyond what the trailer's rated for. That's one thing we like about it, so we get a good safe platform that'll take us down the road that, you know, these trailers are designed to do millions of miles. When we get them, they're five or six years old, put new tires on them, redo the brakes, redo the axles, and we've got a brand new platform that's only going to do for us, you know, a couple of thousand miles a year anyway. This is just like sort of a great example. This was a multi-zone trailer which if you're not familiar with that, this trailer could be frozen in the front. So you could have minus 30 in the front, minus 20, minus 10, maybe do ice cream or something like that. You could come back and you could be at like 30 degrees. And then the back part of the trailer could be at 55 degrees. This is kind of where it all starts. Kind of cool to think about. And we'll strip all this extra material out, all the wiring and conduit and copper and Freon and all the lines. And we'll get back to where we just are down to the thermal envelope of the trailer. And then we'll start building out the walls and we'll show you how we do that. All right, guys. So we're standing in exactly the same place we were standing in the new trailer. And this is the second trailer we did. We have a separate bunk area, restroom in the back of this trailer. Right now the bunks are down. We can fold these up, have a whiteboard on the back of them, and we can use this as an office. Have a couple of monitors back here. This monitor can go outside in the rain. This is the one that stays in here. We have a lot of upgrades and different things that we've done that we'll be doing in the other trailer. But this kind of gives you an idea of where we're headed with the other sleeping trailer. One of the things like that we do that we're going we're to be talking about is we're going to be talking about some of the systems. So in here you can see an example and we can briefly go over it. In this trailer, we have a small generator, a 12K generator, diesel. But this is a transfer switch for that. It gets kind of complex because this trailer has three phase power and we did something pretty cool. We split this and so we have single phase up here, have three phase down here, and then this panel manages that. We have our three phase power. We're in the shop and so you can see we've got 118, 121, 119 and this is the various currents. These are the lights that are on. So this is the current coming in. This switch here can turn the exterior lights on, shows the battery voltage, it shows the fresh water content, the gray water, the black water, and the galley water. So you can see those are all dumped and we have about 50% gray. As you look up higher, you can see some of the custom wiring we do. It says yellow cord is refrigerator. This is prior to us putting in the inverters. We had a way that if the system died, we could put run a drop cord outside or to the truck and run the refrigerator as a backup system. Some of the 12 volt stuff here. We've got two different ways that we can heat hot water on this particular trailer. We have a diesel fired heater that uses a closed loop, a glycol based system or antifreeze system with these three heat exchangers. So we have a diesel fired furnace that can then heat the water so we can still run the small generator. And we also have a big three phase 25 kVA. We connected this with 360 amp breakers into one three phase breaker. So then we have our instant hot water heater where we can do uh, instant hot heat and you can see we can set it back to 140 degrees and then we can turn the hot water on and you can see it kicks on and does it. When we do that, you see the current that we start pulling on the three phase power. See there's 43 amps right there on that. So anyway, that's kind of cool that you can see some of our hot water systems, the electrical system, transfer switch system that little power supply there's a couple more that can run the lights on the outside of the trailer on the 12 volt side so it's kind of cool so another thing we do this is a full-size washer and dryer high capacity commercial maytag front load for the convenience to being installed in here uh, we also have a full-size shower a porcelain commode that's an rv type so it uses very little water this trailer has 880 gallons 
of fresh water. I didn't misspeak. It has four 220 gallon tanks. So it has 880 gallons of fresh water and it also has 880 gallons combined of black and gray storage. But this trailer can also sleep 17 people. So that seems like a lot of water, but that's not going to be a lot of water if we're deployed. We can go three or four days if the guys are pretty uh, conservative with it. So one of the things that you see now, after the trailers get converted, we utilize all the space underneath. And this is something that we do custom in our shop. So behind this grill, we have the HVAC unit, the mini split for the rear, the closed loop hot water heater. Behind this white panel is the tank for the water. And as we come around to this side, this is the three phase power input that we have. We can use this cable to go if we're in an RV single phase situation. Obviously now we have three phase. We utilize three phase because all the generation on site that we typically bring and provide is three phase. This is that 12,000 watt generator that I was telling you about that'll run the whole trailer and give you hot water if you use the diesel fired heater. Also buried in there is a 100 gallon fuel tank to run the diesel generator and to run the hot water. As we were talking about, this is where the strength of the trailer is built. We also build this under base storage and in this under base storage is where we've put, you can see all the different tanks. So like here's a fresh tank. Remember I told you there was 880 gallons. So there's 660 gallons in three here. There's another freshwater tank behind here. Here's a real galley tank, we call it. It holds 220 gallons. And then we have a lot of uh, black and gray, a lot of valves, a lot of customizing that we can do with the power for the different pumping systems. We have a 120 volt pump system redundant and we have a 12 volt pump system redundant. And then under this part of the trailer, we still have all the various black and gray water, freshwater tanks. And then as we come on up to the front, you'll see the last two mini splits. There's six tons of heat and air on this trailer. And these last two mini splits run the two front buck rooms. And then as we move up to the front of the trailer, as we were talking about how the refrigeration unit is gone, you can see how we've taken and just made it look like a van trailer even though it's refrigerated. The cabling that comes down to power these trailers while they're in the station, it goes to a, a 45 kVA transformer over my head. This is a 480 building. And so that's kind of like having a 45 kW generator that can run all three of these trailers. The refrigerator trailer is about to have a power unit in it that'll be powered off the of house power. Then the original sleeping trailer is three phase as well. And then this trailer is three phase. And so we have this cabling set up so that we can power the trailer while it's in station here. Keeps all the batteries charged and the systems working. And by having the trailers always powered up, have the refrigerators always on, then we're able to deploy at a moment's notice. All right guys, so now that you've kind of seen how we're gonna do it, we're gonna take an old refrigerated Walmart trailer. So we already have the insulation in place. You've seen what we've done in the past. And so we'd like for you to follow along in this series and see what we're gonna turn this into so that you guys can be a part of it. Now would be a great time for you to subscribe or ask a question in the comments about what you would like to see us maybe delve into or if you have any questions on any of the applications that we're going to be doing now would be a great time to do that if you have somebody that's interested in this kind of work or this kind of thing take a minute and send this video to them we'd like for you to enjoy seeing how we take this process from start to finish and we'll see you in the next episode